Aloha from Maui, everybody. This is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com coming to you with the February 27th stock market wrap-up that you can use for the next stock market session, which I believe is March 2nd, if my date's right, 28-1-2. Yeah, okay. First off, I'm going to go ahead and just show you. This is, right now, your current, your weekly review. Do you see how many stocks are right there? These are 10 stocks. There are 10 stocks in your weekly review, and none of them our buys are even close to it. So I just want to show you how bad the leaders look. And I'm going to show you which one is the best looking leader just to be a nice guy. Probably CPSI. Yeah, CPSI. So there, I'm at least telling you which one looks the best. So if you don't, if you're not a subscriber, not sure what I look for in my longs, I'm starting to give you a little bit of a hint there. Okay, now let's go ahead and just go ahead and kick it to the regular stock market indexes that we always do here at part one. Part two and part three for the subscribers. Part two will go over the longs and short scans. Part three will be the actual one, two, three, four shorts that we have. Three are new, one's an ad, and then we have one ad long. Now with that, we have to take profits in one, two, three, four, five shorts. So that we're taking partial profits in five shorts, and we'll go over them in the part three. So let's get this party started. I was trying to be as dorky there as possible. Okay, Dow Jones Industrial Average. It was down 119% on a huge volume. Now, the thing is, is that this was options expiration on February 20th. But let me look at the 27th here. And there is no number one that says options expirations, obviously. I'm being facetious. But I'm holding my uh, interactive brokers, international trading calendar, which helps. So we know that this big down day, the 1.34% was on higher volume, but that was options related. Now we have a breakdown Friday where the Dow Jones Industrial Average doesn't close at the low of the day, has a small tail, but still closes pretty darn weak and is actually at new lows from November's closing lows by 6% now. And now let's just go ahead and just show you why being short has been right since October of 2007 when I said to, whenever I said the market topped. November 2007, the only one that I know that will definitely be able to tell us, say, yes, you did, Josh, is uh, Platinum subscriber Brian. I said, sell all of your mutual funds right now. I happened to buy some CGM Mutual Focus Fund and Hennessy Corporation back in 2002 just in case stocks didn't move, but then stocks showed up everywhere, but I held on to those two anyway. But I sold them there. Since then, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 49%. Huge volume. Hopefully that huge volume wasn't everywhere else. Yes, it was. New York Stock Exchange. Look at this. Let's go all the way out. You can see that it closed it was barely off the lows of the day, but still had a weak day. No options expiration to deal with there. Just a straight up nasty down day. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Cold. And then also, whenever we look at this, we can go back out to October, the top, on the New York Stock Exchange. And look at where it's gone from there to now, and we can see the New York Stock Exchange is now down 54% in one year and about four months. So this is the worst bear market I've ever studied personally besides the 1929 to 1932 to 1938 malaise to 1942 finally moving again market. But, you know, there's still going to be stocks that move higher, and that's why I do have uh, long that we're adding to, which means that we're already long it, and it's working out right. However, three new shorts and one new short ad, that clearly tells you which way the market wants to go, so we can't even joke around about that. Now, okay, so hopefully volume wasn't higher than the NASDAQ, right? Wrong. Volume was higher, but volume was just barely higher. Investors Business Daily said it was 7% higher still. The NASDAQ, in my opinion, had one of the worst sessions overall because it decided to open at 1376, rally all the way up to 1401, and then come all the way back down and close right around where it opened at 1377. So it only, it, it basically closed just one point above where it opened, but it was down 13 points from the day before. That's down 
0.98%. That's another distribution day. So right now, just looking at this very close, close chart in February only, we can see that the NASDAQ had a churning day here on heavier volume on February 4th, had a distribution day on February 10th, one, had a distribution day, oh man, my arrows, had a distribution day on February 17th, down 4%. That's number two officially with the churning day. Had a distribution day on the 19th, which was its third distribution day, four, fourth completed with the churning. The next day, it was down not enough, but still have your volume. But then the very next day, it falls 3.71%. Now, that's not distribution day, but the price sure didn't look like it. Then another churning day. Then a lower volume day, but a nasty day, and now another distribution day. So that's one, two, three, four clear distribution days. One, two, three, four. Four clear distribution days with two ugly low volume days. The day when it was down 3%. The day when it was down 2.38%. So I hope we're on the same page. Now, I do want to show everybody a good news thing because look at the IYW. That is the iShares Dow Jones United States Technology Sector Index Fund ETF. Now, I you know I like the green bop. I like not a lot, a lot of green bop. It's going the wrong way, not max green bop. So obviously I'm not in love with it. Plus, after all this big, huge volume surge accumulation, you know, it's had lower volume pullback, but the volume surges whenever it rallies hasn't been that much. And since it hasn't been that much, IYW hasn't been that exciting recently. And also, it's below its 50-day moving average. But there is one key thing here that is very awesome, I do believe. The relative strength line, look at it from December to the beginning of January to where it ended January to where it is now. While the price has broken down back below the 50-day moving average, the relative strength line has gone on to hit new highs. Then, as it fell even harder, the price, the relative strength line actually did pull back. But then it broke out of a base right there on 227. While the stock is still in a downtrend trying to make a base. It is making higher highs, but on the very short term, from early February to now, it is making lower lows. And so lower lows, and earlier was making higher highs and higher lows. So kind of disappointing, but overall still looking okay. Not bad. Good to see technology leading because that means that there's some stocks that I'll show you in part two from my subscribers in the technology area that are waking up that look good. Excuse me, I took a drink of water there. Now let me go ahead and show you the S&P 600. We don't get to see the volume here, but I want to show you how much it's down since at normally your small caps are your leading stocks. From the top area, it is down right around 53%. Okay, right there, 53.39. Yeah, so it's right down right around 53%. However, I do believe the New York Stock Exchange is the worst one as the NYSC is down. I believe it was 54%, right? 55%, so even uglier. So, as you can see, you could possibly be down 55% from December 7th, but <laughs> there isn't a single subscriber with me down even cl remotely close to 55%. That's impossible uh, using the Investor's Business Daily Cancel Them Strategy. And that's why the IBD Cancel Them Strategy is now the number one strategy out of 56 strategies that the, Amer the American Association of Individual Investors had test. They test 56 different styles. The number one style returning 1,351% is Investors Business Daily since 1998. Since 1998, while it's returned 1,351%, the S&P 500 has returned a negative 6.9%. Now, I'm doing that off memory, so I hope I got all that right. Another thing I'm doing off memory is that gross domestic product was down 6.2%. And I want to remind everybody, as goes the gross domestic product, so goes your market. So unless our gross domestic product starts moving up again, not like down 2%, down 3%, it actually needs to be like up 4%, up 3%, up 2%. It's going to be hard to see the market rally huge. However, anything can happen. The, we're back at the 1997 levels. I didn't think we'd see that, really, but we are. So really quickly, let me show you the United States dollar, that it's looking good, looking great, new, new high still. If you bought it when it moved over the 50-day moving average in July, you're doing excellent. I'm running out of time, so I can't show you. Gold, nice big tail today. 
So it was barely, it was only down 0.41%. Silver was only down 0.15%. Big tail. Platinum was only down. What the heck am I talking about? Platinum was up 1.90%. Let me look at PTM. PT, oh my gosh, you got red buff. Wow. So I'm going to go back to platinum, act platinum, but just wow. Up 1.90%. The hard metals are leading, and the United States dollar is looking strong. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. I'm completely running out of time. Part two, we'll go over the longs and shorts. Part three, we'll go over our one new long that we're adding to. That it looks great and our three new shorts and our one short that we're adding to and our one two three four five partial covers aloha from maui everybody this is joshua hayes our good friend and our platinum subscriber todd benfer will be coming over for a week so who knows if i'll be able to get videos off every night so enjoy them and watch them whenever i do produce them because there might be some nights when we don't have them